hospital in Sulaymaniyah, like other emergency hospitals, has a garden. It has toys for the children, halls to walk in, places for people to gather. This keeps the hospital amenable, so that treatment means friendship and respect. Training local personnel is essential for emergency. It's eight years since emergency began work in Iraqi Kurdistan. Most of the medical work is now currently done by local staff. Halil 31 is the head nurse in the men's ward. Two years ago, his wife and his daughter died of thalassemia. Since then, emergency has been his life, and his patients have been his family. Halil tells a story of war, of poverty and marginalization, of people who are still being wounded by landmines planted years and years ago, and of continuing internal conflict. He tells us of people who are still getting scalded by boiling water or burnt by cooking stoves that fail to meet even minimal safety standards. The flow of arrivals at the emergency ward throughout the day provide a constant link with the outside world. Mohammed, 31, has arrived here from Cham Chamal. He brought home a little contraption he found while he was out fishing. He thought it might come in handy somehow. He was lucky. When the bomb exploded, it only wounded his face, chest and hands. Next door, the two operating rooms work non-stop. Suffering is always pressing. Almost all the small patients in the children's burns unit are victims of accidents at home. Like Mahdi, four, burnt when the kerosene stove exploded. Her parents are divorced and her father won't come and visit her. Sometimes you're met with smiles, more often with silence. They look you straight in the eye with courage or perhaps resignation. They carry a dignity and composure in their pain, well beyond their years. The eyes of Asuda convey mute desperation. This pretty five-year-old lost her right hand when a bomb exploded. Her father was a mullah in Halabja. On visiting day, her powerful father is accompanied by a procession of friends and relatives bearing gifts. In the middle of the garden is a special play area where the children gather for fun and games. Their brightly coloured drawings reflect their experiences and memories, their hopes and their worst fears. In Erbil, as in Sulaymaniyah, the emergency hospital garden has a playhouse where the children meet to draw and write under the guidance of Dana, the colour teacher. In Erbil, as in Sulaymaniyah, the building and treatment areas are designed around the patients themselves to further their search to find themselves and reconstruct their lives. The new patients continue to arrive. New people, new dramas. Just as they did during the war of 2003, when there was fighting in these gentle, friendly-looking lands, made suddenly dangerous by mines and unexploded bombs. These lands are the only source of sustenance for many of the local people. One of them, Ali, burnt by the explosion of a mine he found in a field, walked for three hours before he found someone to take him to hospital. Almost all of his body had been burnt. Because cases like these are so common, emergency has opened special burns units in Erbil, like those in Salamania. 
Fazil, 13, is in the men's ward. He was playing in the street with some friends when they found a funny looking piece of pipe in the ground and started throwing it back and forth. The pipe flared up in Fazil's hands. Many women are victims of accidents at home. Zakia is 20 years old and has five children. She's pregnant with her sixth baby. While she was firing up her own kerosene stove to cook a meal, it blazed up and burnt her. Alda, 17, has lost his sight and both his hands. He went behind the lines with his father in search of scrap metal, anything he could use at home. He picked up a wooden board and set off a mine trap. Christani, 12, says he found a little blue cylinder in the hills where he was helping his father and his brothers tend their animals. <laughs> he picked up the cluster bomb and in a matter of seconds lost his eyesight and both his hands. Yeah. <laughs>